This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video, we're going over static manual release for the vastus lateralis. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're watching it for educational purposes, and that you are a licensed manual therapist, or your scope of practice in your state allows you to perform static manual release techniques. Physical therapists, athletic trainers, massage therapists, chiropractors, osteopaths, you're likely all in the clear personal trainers, this probably does not fall within your scope. I'm going to have my friend Brian come out. He's going to help me demonstrate this technique. Now all of our manual release techniques, they follow similar principles. We have to know how to palpate the muscle and in this case the vastus lateralis is huge and fairly easy to palpate being on the side of our leg. We get bonus points for knowing where our trigger points are because that'll help direct our hands and I got the trigger points marked off here on Brian I don't know if you can see him in this view but when we go to a close-up you will be able to see those trigger points marked out you should be aware if there's any contra indications to this technique there's anything that could be damaged by compression in the case of the vastus lateralis we don't have any major concerns and the last thing is we need to know what the best position for release technique is and that's usually based on what's comfortable for the therapist as well as being able to put a little tension in that muscle so as you go to press down on these trigger points these little balls of overactivity you don't start playing the trying to put your finger on a marble game now there's two positions we use for vastus lateralis release and one of them in particular makes very little sense and I think you guys will find in both techniques that moving the hip actually contributes to increase in tension in the vastus lateralis which doesn't make a whole lot of sense if we think back to our basic anatomy courses but if we take things up a notch we learn that the vastus lateralis actually does invest into the iliotibial band and putting tension in the iliotibial band whether we go into extension and the TFL pulls a little tighter or we go into flexion and the glute max pulls a little tighter on the iliotibial band that's also going to have an effect on those vastus lateralis fibers. The first position I'm going to show you guys is is probably the one that's most obvious or makes the most sense. I'm going to go ahead and take him into some knee flexion. I'm going to use my body to block knee flexion I'm going to be pushing down on his vastus lateralis, so I'm going to go ahead and take this leg, make him a little bit more comfortable and stable by bending it, and then I'm going to be careful to actually put his medial gastroc underneath his vastus medialis so that when I press down, I get meat on meat, and I don't do one of these like kneecap on ankle bone things, because if I press down there, it's going to hurt. So we go here. I'm going to do my palpation posterior to anterior to feel for the most overactive or the densest fascicles. And then once I've found them, I generally know that trigger points in the vastus lateralis usually hope happen pretty close to the knee or right dead center between greater trochanter and knee. So you guys notice even when I put my hand down, I put my hand down pretty close to the center of his thigh because I'm hoping to get kind of lucky here and not only put my hand down on overactive fascicles but be pretty close to a nice tight nodule, a trigger point without having to do too much searching moving from distal to proximal or proximal to distal. How's that feeling? Uh, that's a little more tender. Okay. So, now that I've found this nice hyperactive point, I'm going to go ahead and this is going to be my dummy hand. I'm just going to let this totally relax. I'm going to take this hand, straighten it out. All right, so I'm now using this hand to apply force. I'm just going to go ahead and lean over. And I'm going to wait for 30 seconds to 2 minutes until that tissue density starts to decrease. The overactivity starts to decrease. Brian tells me he just can't handle it anymore, which of course, you need to listen to your patients and back off a little bit. Or of course, he tells me that he's not feeling anything at all and the discomfort has subsided. That's probably a good sign we can move on. Now we can move on to other points, right? So I can go back to, all right, we did the one in the middle of his thigh. Does he have anything near his knee? 
I feel a point right there and go ahead and put down some pressure. One thing that often gets mistaken with this technique is once again, I said this is vastus lateralis static manual release. I think a lot of people would look at me doing this and being like, oh, it's IT band release. You can't really release your IT band, guys. Trigger points are a muscular phenomenon. Um, there are some fascial techniques that might be able to help with gliding of the iliotibial band over the vastus lateralis. But these static compression techniques are muscular techniques for a muscular phenomenon for the most part being trigger points and what we're really trying to do is decrease that overactivity. How's that feel? <laughs> Good, let's go ahead and have you on your back. Now the other position that you can do for vastus lateralis manual release is similar to what's this called the iron cross stretch Right, cross stretch. This is the weird one where I have him in knee extension, I'm taking him further into flexion, but somehow the increased tension in the iliotibial band allows me to have enough tension in my vastus lateralis to still find hyperactive bands and of course tight nodules which I of course then want to release. Now be careful with this technique. If you have somebody with low back pain, this isn't a great technique or a great position to put them in. Notice I have a whole lot of hip adduction. His pelvis is rotated this way. I'm pulling him further into spinal flexion, hip or low back. This could be a, a somewhat a compromised position. This position does come in handy though if you're doing a lot of different techniques and you happen to be working on the biceps femoris and then you can just go on to the vastus lateralis. I do find this effect, an effective position. Next we'll go to our close-up recap. All right guys, this is your close-up recap. Just so you can see my hands, the position of the leg, how I search for a trigger point. I'm gonna go ahead and pull him into knee flexion. I'm gonna use my body to block his leg, so now I'm not doing any work, I got both my hands free. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use, I mean, since this is vastus lateralis and it's very thick, very dense, chances are I'm gonna use both thumbs to even search for overactive fascicles. And then you can see here, I happen to know that the trigger points are closer to the knee or right in the middle of the muscle, so I'm gonna put my hands pretty close to where I think those are. And then I'm gonna search by finding the most overactive fascicles and moving either proximal or dis, oh there's a nice one right there. All right, once I found that, I'm gonna use my dummy thumb, I'm gonna relax this hand, I'm gonna use the other hand to apply pressure, and when I say use the other hand to apply pressure, I'm actually just pushing through my arm into my palm and then making sure that we're meat on meat here, vastus medialis to gluteus, or I'm sorry, vastus medialis to medial gastroc, I'm gonna go ahead and push down until I get a nice release. Make sure you guys don't do this thing because if I push down his kneecap into his, his ankle, that's not gonna feel good at all. To show you guys the other position, I'm gonna go ahead and have Brian move away from me a little bit and then he's gonna go into this kind of iron cross stretch now, the trigger points would be in the same places on this other leg, closer to the knee or right in the middle of the muscle. And generally speaking, I'm moving my hands in this direction with this one. All right, so I am applying a little bit of a distal to a proximal force. I'm gonna find those tight fascicles. That's a nice tight fascicle there. Let's see if I can find a nodule within that tight fascicle, a little marble. Oh, there we go. All right, once I find that, again, just apply a little pressure and lean in, and I am leaning this way, guys, so I'm not pushing straight down, per se. This position can be a little problematic for those individuals with low back or hip pain, so keep both these techniques in your repertoire. That first technique is probably your go-to. I think you guys will find this technique sometimes convenient if you're combining it with a bunch of other release techniques. I hope you guys enjoyed 
static manual release of the vastus lateralis. Remember, if we have somebody up on the table, we're about to perform a manual release, we want to be 80% sure that's what they need based on our movement assessment. If we're talking about the vastus lateralis, things get a little complicated in the sense that we have to include the vastus lateralis in the tensor fasciolata iliotibial band vastus lateralis complex. And then we start to see that the vastus lateralis gets included whenever the TFL does on things like our overhead squat assessment. So that would be signs like feet turns out, knees bow in, excessive forward lean, anterior pelvic tilt. If I was doing goniometric assessment, well the vastus lateralis is a knee extensor, so if I saw a limitation in knee flexion, that might give me an indication. In a limitation in hip extension, as well as hip internal rotation, may also be indications of vastus lateralis overactivity. Once again, please mind your scope of practice if manual release techniques do not fall within your scope. Do not attempt this. If you can find individuals to practice on before you actually attempt this on patients, that would be beneficial. There is no substitution to having a mentor or taking a manual therapy course, but even just practicing on your colleagues will be very beneficial. Being able to talk to another manual therapist about hand position and what things felt like and body position and whose pressures felt the best is invaluable information. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I look forward to talking to you soon.